Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of The Contented Narrative. I've got my first ever guest appearance, remember, Jo, uh, we had her last year. She is back. We are at Disney World, so that's why there's a slight delay in this episode, but next week's episode should be going back to the normal time of 5pm on Friday. Sorry guys if you were expecting a video yesterday, too busy having too much fun. But of course, because we're in Disney, we decided to do at least one Disney. So this week's book to film adaptation is Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. Now, I have never read this book um, until we came here. Um, and then obviously I decided to give it a go because that's what we decided we would do. Yep. Although hindsight, if we're in the Little Mermaid suite, we maybe should have done Little Mermaid. But it's okay. <laughs> we're absolutely fine. So... First things first, we'll be discussing the uh, film, the book, and then how well does the plot take from the book. So, film first of all. Now, we are doing the uh, animated version of Peter Pan, although the live action version is actually a lot closer to the book than the animated version was. It had, should it Which one? My favourite animated version with, Jer uh, with uh, Jeremy Sumter in it. Okay. My favourite, fair enough, my favourite. Um, it, it literally breaks up, like, picks up things from verbatim from this book. But anyway, so we're doing the animated version. Um, so first things first, film. Loved it! <laughs> I mean, it's a classic. It's absolutely classic, and it, it's surprisingly close to the book. It, yes. In unexpected ways. But we're just discussing the yeah. film at this point. Yeah. So, the film, although it does come with a disclaimer at the beginning of the film now on Disney+, Plus, yep. um, due to some outdated views, I think the majority of it does stand up well. Majority of it. Yeah. Apart yeah. from, obviously, the, the, the Native American scenes, they're a little bit dated. But the rest of it <laughs> is pretty decent. Yeah. Um, and honestly, who doesn't want to think about? Sometimes she's not all bad. Sometimes she's not all good. She's only got one, uh, one, one emotion at a time. time. Um, I mean, this the film came out years ago in the 60s. And it's just, it's one of the classics. You, you can't go wrong with it's it. It's a beautiful film. It is such a beautiful film. I mean, we like we can fly, we can fly. Yeah. Like, going through London, you've got Nana, um, obviously, which is why my my nan, uh, my nan Jen, does not like being called Nana, because it reminds her of the dog from Peter Pan. Uh, whereas my other Nana, Nana Contento, is absolutely fine. Uh, so... But it's got a wide range of characters and the film is really good and I just love the music as well. Yeah, yeah. There's songs that just stay in your head years and years. Um, I didn't re-watch it for this Don't because I didn't need to. You, like, I didn't re-watch it for this either because I didn't need to. I've seen it that many times that I'm like, I know it off by heart. Yeah. Same with the live action, I'm not going to lie. I, <laughs> that, that was my crush when I was younger, Jeremy Sumter's Peter Pan. Um, but I mean... It's, I, I give the film um, an 8 out of 10 because it is a really, really good film. Um, as I said, it probably doesn't get as high big now because of the, some of the dated scenes, but the majority of it is, yeah. stands up well. So for me, it's an 8 out of 10. And obviously, if you're any kind of Disney fan or any kind of just film fan, just you need to have watched it. What about you? I'd probably give it an 8.5. 8.5, yeah. So next, the book. Now, as I said, first time I'd ever read this book. I literally, I knew it was a book, but I'd never read the book. And it was a surprising book. Uh, Peter Pan's a little bit of a psycho in this book. Yeah. Like, it is, it's mentioned um, that uh, when the Lost Boys get a little bit too old, they're gone, but not in a kind of, I'm just going to pop over to the shops kind of gone. They're a gone, gone. Yeah, but even in the first chapter, they talk about how all of the the stories that Wendy, Mrs. Darling has heard about Peter is that he he takes ch dead children halfway. Mm. Like, okay, we're just gonna go ham in the first half. All right, like straight away. <laughs> Ironically as well, this is actually a book club book as well. Um, this was a book club book that I set last month because I knew I was doing it for this, so I thought two birds, one stone. But I mean, there's a, there's a, a, a chapter in it where you've got the um, Indians chasing the pirates and the pirates chasing the lost boys. And apparently it's just like they go round in a circle around the like, island and sometimes they catch up but like there's scenes where there's fights and people literally die like they just they're just like yep see you later i'm, I'm yeah. gone and it's just so like i mean one thing i will say is i mean this book it covers a period of time and at the end it, you get something that you know you don't really get in the film you you get in the book where wendy's grown up and she has a child and the child goes off to to, uh, with Peter Pan, which I suppose is, you know, Return to Neverland. The yeah. sequel. <laughs> but then, after that, Wendy's granddaughter then goes off 
to Neverland. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of continues from there and you kind of sat there going, okay, you'd think with Wendy's own adventures. But you kind of get the, um, like a, a foreshadowing of that right at the beginning when Mrs. Darling says that she recognises him. Yes, that is true. So, I mean, has he got an obsession with that family? Or just All like... the stories they know, because that's apparently why he visits to listen to the stories, not necessarily for the girl, which is creepier when you say it out loud. I mean, <laughs> I love, I love the parents in this as well, because even though it's a period of time in the book, they are so, like, Mrs. Darling sits by the window, constantly by the window. Mr. Darling ends up sleeping in the doghouse because he literally has put himself in the doghouse mm. because he feels like it's his fault that his children have gone. Um, you know, Nana's then enveloped back into the family. And it's just, it's a good book. And, I mean, I know a couple of people do struggle with it sometimes, but I didn't. Um, it was just unexpected and... Especially when you get more interactions with the different sort of like, as I said, like the Native Americans chasing the, the pirates, the pirates chasing the Lost Boys and then vice versa. Um, but what got me was the fight where they get captured because the Native Americans get like killed. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, and I'm pretty sure they killed Hook as well. I'm yeah. pretty sure yeah, he dies. I think so. Because I'm like, oh, in the film, he just sort of, you know, goes swimming off into the distance being chased by the crocodile. I love that they've got the crocodile in both. I love the crocodile, the ticking crocodile. But yeah, so I mean, this this book, I couldn't put down. It was really enjoyable. Um, and also what I loved about this, the book as well by J.M. Barry, is the copyright went to, oh, what was the hospital called? Great Ormond Street? Yes. So the copyright was with Great Ormond Street, which meant that all proceeds from the copyright went to Great Ormond Street until it went into the public domain. And I just, I love that he did that. I yeah. love that he was just like, do you know what? No, this isn't, this isn't going to profit me. It's going to profit children. Um, and that just makes it that much better. And I just, I mean, it gets a nine out of 10 for me. It genuinely does. I think it loses a point because of how dark it is at points where it's like, Peter Pan kills the Lost Boys. <laughs> I, I feel yeah. like I'm like, that was unnecessary. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those books where I actually like the film more than I like the book. Oh, okay. Tell me about it. Um, I, th I think it's just one of those ones where Disney did the right thing in making, like it's a book for children, but the Dis but Disney's take on it is it's more for children. Mm. Whereas this is, that's for children. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Okay. I, I like it. I like it as a, I love it a lot as a standalone book, but the fact it's meant to be a children's book weirds me out that it's so, it goes dark and then light and then dark and then light. And you're not expecting it when it goes dark either. It's just sort of like, you're like, oh, right, okay, that's where we are now. Yeah, and <laughs> it's not like Disney doesn't have that in its films. True. But the Black Cauldron. But the books that Disney's are normally based on are the, the dark stories and Disney's just like, I'm just going to take the bits I like. It's not normal that they're actually aimed at children. <laughs> True. So, how long did it take you to read? A day. Yeah, I know. It's quite a quick read. Yeah, though. it's quite a quick read. Um, What's your favourite character? Wendy. Really? Yeah, just because I. she's so fleshed out. Like, she knew that she was going to grow up from the age of two. Mm. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I just like Wendy. Yeah, I, I mean, don't I'm like just... Pan. Controversial opinion. No, I think Pan is a spoiled little child. But you know, yeah. he is a child. You, this is this is what I always think when I, when I was reading the book. I mean, obviously he is a murdering child, but he is a child. So there are certain actions when he's like throwing a hissy fit because he won't take his medicine. I and I'm like, got, I just got weird twilight. How long has he been a child for? Thank exactly. You. Um, but yeah, because you, you get that 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 sort of feeling of he is actually just a child. Mm. Like you know, he he does not grow up. That's his whole thing. Um, and he's different from the Lost Boys in that he, <coughs> he chose to not grow up. Whereas yeah. they're just kids that fell out of prams. Yeah. And. That was another thing that I that didn't age well in either the film or the book. It's just the casual sexism. Oh my the god, casual yes. Casual sexism. Of course girls don't fall out of prams because they're too smart. Yeah, butter Wendy up, Pan. Yay. Mm -hmm. I mean, in all fairness, I don't know if it's 100% sexism because I think he just wants to butter her up to be like, girls are too clever. 
and I don't think it's sexism in the reception, but the sexism I think is when he's like, you're going to be a mother. Just the you're just you're doing the washing, the cooking, the cleaning, the telling stories. You're looking after the but children. But even Mr. Darling treats Mrs. Darling like that. True. Like from the get go. Like, but I mean, you've got to remember when it was written. So as you said, it doesn't stand up that well because yeah. when it was written, that was what that was normal. Yeah, that's what women did. Yeah. So, book to film adaptation in regards to sort of like how well it came across. As we said, it has taken a lot. So it's taken like the crocodile and hook, um, and pan the and darlings. Hook. Yeah. Nana. The biggest, the biggest difference for me, obviously murdering aside, was actually the time frame. So in the film, it's quite quick. It's one night. Yeah. It's basically one night. Like they go away, they spend ages at Neverland, but when they come back, it's been one night. In the book, it's a period of weeks. I think the film leaves that quite ambiguous, actually. You see, now I, I don't think it does because I think when they come back, they, like there's not as much sort of like oh my god my children where have you been i don't know Which... i think it would have to be quite a long time for the mr and mrs darling to be like yeah okay random children yeah but the lost boys don't come back and like live with them in the animated film i'm reasonably confident that they do but like i said i didn't rewatch it specifically <laughs> for this so i can't say if we are wrong about this leave it below in the comments yeah. if they do come back with the lost boys or not because i'm I'm sure that the Lost Boys don't come back in the I just have a vision in my head of them all seated around Mrs. Darling while she's telling a story at the end of the film. Yeah. And Wendy going, Mother, can we keep them? Maybe we should have rewatched it. <laughs> yeah. Because that final scene, as I said, leave it below in the comments, please. But I mean, that's the, my biggest thing is the time jump. I think it does seem a lot quicker in the film than it does in the book. Yeah. But, and also, murder. Yeah. But it does take a lot of the same plot points. You've got Nana, who's a dog. Um, you know, I like that they kept the way Mr. Darling treated her in the beginning. Yeah. But I also love the addition of the treasure map in the film because that's not in the book and I love that. Yeah, with on the, face yeah, on the face. Pops. Absolutely fantastic. But I mean, you know, so book to film adaptation wise, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a seven out of ten because it's close and I feel like it probably would get higher if I can remember how, like, if the Lost Boys come home. I'm going to give it a nine because I'm pretty sure the Lost Boys do come home with them and I feel like they took the spirit of the book really well so Pan's still a bit of a bratty up star. But he doesn't murder and we're looking at how, not the spirit, we're looking at what they actually take from the book. So the spirit's fine. Yeah, but I think missing out on just the murder, considering it's a Disney adaptation, like they can't really take the murder. They have done before, you know. I mean, They always kill off parents. So the beginning of Finding Nemo, come on. They, they kill off the entire... Alright, but this is a film where they don't kill off the parents. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Anyway, so that's obviously our opinions. Um, thank you very much for watching. Again, please, if you do if you do watch the animated film, leave it below in the comments and let us know if they do bring the Lost Boys home. Because um, I genuinely can't and remember. And if you've also read the book and there were massive chunks missing that we have forgotten were completely missing because we didn't really watch the film. Yeah. We practically I... didn't do our homework. <laughs> We got Disney obsessed, unfortunately, but thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support. As I said, next week's episode should be out at the normal time of 5pm on Friday. Um, but remember to always keep it contento.